Good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasik. Of course, cutters of the technology, we're speaking to men of, you know, passion for football from the comfort of their households, talking to us with regards to the agenda they have for Kenyan football. Both have declared interest to contest for Football Kenya Federation Presidency. Of course, I'm with Fredo Prenda, the big man himself, alongside Tiras Wayaki residential panelists to talk about what is happening in matters football internationally. But just before that, let's link up with one Bonfaso Seno, football writer, best in Kisumu and Safe Muti. Of course, he's here in Nairobi. He's former Kenyan international. Son, I can see you. Good to have you on board one more time. You are talking to us about, you know, the state of Kenyan football. We've seen uh, in recent weeks a game of musical chairs, overpayment of Adela Amruch, 100 million Kenya shillings. Ministry of Sports, of course representing government, is saying that won't pay, <laughs> while Football Kenya Federation insisting that they don't have money to pay, and even if a ban comes their way, so be it. What's the way forward, man? Uh, the issue of uh, Amruj, uh, I think uh, it's very unfortunate because uh, we are finding ourselves in a situation whereby maybe uh, we are going to lose out on a, a very good platform to uh, showcase uh, our talent. So uh, I think the Federation is also finding themselves in a very tight spot because they don't have a choice but to pay or we miss out on, on playing the uh, 2022 uh, World Cup qualifiers. To me, I think the right thing to do now, and in the best interest of uh, of the game, uh, is to sit down with those who matter, the, the stakeholders, uh, the government included. Uh, we must explain to them. Actually, this should now go beyond even the federation. We should explain to them that uh, we have uh, a chance here uh, for our uh, youth to, to showcase their talents, and uh, it should not go to waste because we really. I don't know what may transpire after the qualifiers. Maybe a few uh, talents will be spotted. Uh, in, the, in the best interest of the country and in the best interest of the youth and the talents that we have in soccer, I think we should agree uh, as a country, as a government, uh, as football stakeholders, that we must not miss this opportunity. And to me, I think... Uh, the government is the way out now because uh, if you look at the, the money from the federation, uh, the, I think they just received some 500,000 uh, from FIFA. That can only pay up to uh, 50, 50 million uh, of whatever Amroche is asking for, which is about 109 million. So even if we take part of that, then uh, just to make sure that we don't miss, uh, then now the government can also come and, and support and see how we move out of this. But uh, moving forward, uh, I think uh, a mistake like this one um, should never, ever be repeated. And uh, in my, you know, if, 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 uh, if I succeed to, to become a federation president, I'll, I'll see to it that the contracts that we give uh, our, our national uh, coaches are flexible enough. Uh, and it also leaves us in a position of strength uh, so that in case of a district, you know, there's a, there's a way it can be sorted out without uh, uh, the federation uh, incurring such uh, uh, losses. Seth Mutie, but, we've seen the pronouncement from, from the Football Kenya Federation that Gormaya now are the duly crowned champions after suspension of the league indefinitely due to coronavirus pandemic. In case you get elected the president of the Kenyan FA, will you work consulted consultatively with other stakeholders because we've seen KPL in a rejoinder saying that they were not consulted and you know FKF has been a one-man show. Yes uh, what I can say if I can comment about that uh, KPL have a contract with FKF and I think their contract is running out in September 2020 Nick Mwenda should respect all the contents there in, in that contract. It is KPL who have been mandated to run the KPL, and it is them, uh, via the CEO, Jack Oguta, who are supposed to make any pronouncement about that league. 
So what has happened is Nick Mwendo has circumvented the law. Nick Mwendo has broken the law. Nick Mwendo has broken the ethics. He is not the one who is supposed to say who has won the league or who has not won. It is up to the KPL CEO to say whether the league should continue or not continue, whether uh, this team has won, this has not won, whether this team has, is going for relegation or not going for relegation. If I am FKF president, I will respect all the rules and regulations. If I have any contract with any entity, I will honor it. I mean, here, yeah, this is this is not rocket science. This is something very, very simple, unless somebody is playing politics, you know? So uh, I am telling Mr. Uh, Nick Wendt, the incumbent, please, please, please respect the rules and regulations, respect the contracts. If you want to take over uh, the running of the league, wait until September 2020 when the contract expires. And if you want to run the league, don't renew that contract and then run the league yourself. Thank you very much. Osano, as a, as a, a, as a, man, a young as man, a passionate youth who loves football, what's your agenda for the young people in this country whose love for football is unwavering? Because, you know, football revolves around youth and they form an integral part as far as success and development of soccer. Of course, in 2022, Nick had told us that, you know, God willing, Kenya can qualify to play in FIFA World Cup in Qatar. In case that happens, maybe we won't have the likes of Wanyama, the likes of Wanga, the likes of, you know, Brian Young, Mandela, playing for the national team. We shall have, you know, the upcoming talents spotted from Mashinani from the grassroots. How do you see going about, you know, youth football as a young man? As a young man yeah. hey, before I answer that, I just want to say something about this tug of war between KPL and FKF. I think it has been going on for far too long, as it's really not healthy. Uh, for our football. And uh, uh, according to me, uh, I think it should be sorted out structurally. Uh, in my thinking and, and, and what I believe in is that uh, FKF uh, should somehow have a foothold uh, in, in, in APL, maybe a seat or in the governing council of, or, or something. It happens even in England where the FA has uh, got shared in the opinion. As it is now, uh, it looks like uh, we are having two separate uh, football entities here that are trying to flex their muscles. Uh, and uh, in every situation, you always find themselves taking different positions. I think that's not very people for our football. And uh, it is time that uh, uh, we align now uh, how we operate right from uh, the federation to all the all the other boards that are managing uh, football in the country. About youth football, um, uh, I think we need to increase funding uh, when it comes to, to, to youth football. We need to go down there and, and put money where we, we, I would say we manufacture talent so that uh, uh, we, can, we, can, we can be able to, to produce more. I think uh, the, uh, the federation should be able to partner with the, with the secondary schools so that uh, uh, they make sure that uh, the talents that's coming there, they can be monitored, they can be tracked, so that in a progressive way they can rise through the leagues and and, and reach a point where they can be um, a professional. Secondly, I think it's it's uh, it's now time for us to uh, say that KPL clubs uh, should have youth teams. And, and to me, I think uh, uh, it's long over overdue for us now to have a youth league. Uh, Uganda is is implementing the same. Ethiopia is implementing. You know, so why not? Why, why not us? Uh, we should have a youth league uh, running, uh, uh, augmenting whatever is going on at the grassroots level. Good to hear from you. So, uh, Seth, I know you are a professional, an alumni of Stare Boy Center, someone who went to uh, university. We've had, you know, the public outcry that also football management has to be left to, you know, professionals. Nick Mwendo is a professional himself, he's an IT uh, professional. He also attended learning, uh, defying all odds. You know, football at some point, we've branded it as a sport <laughs> that, uh, you know, is, is played by those people who are uh, academically schooled. How do you seek using your, your, your professional input to, for the success of the Federation in case you get elected? Well, thank you very much. 
Before I answer that, let me say something very important to add on what Osano said. If yes. everybody remembers very well, Victor Wanyama, he has not played in our league in Kenya. He went from school direct to Belgium, to Celtic, to Tottenham. What am I trying to say? The product of Misa. No, still, what I'm trying to say is this. He did not play in any yes. local league. He did not yes. play. So what I'm trying to say is this. People are saying, if we are locked out from Qatar, we are locked out from this, that, then talent will be wasted. No, talent will not be wasted. As the FKF president, I will have partnership programs, exchange programs with football academies all over the world, whereby coaches will be coming here in, to Kenya to look for those talents, and our coaches will be going abroad for training. And it will not be that one must be a player at the Premier League so that they can get a chance to go outside. Even a primary school kid, even a secondary school kid will have the chance of going and uh, uh, playing football abroad as a profession. Okay, now let me come back to what you said uh, about management. Um, there is something people don't uh, really mention. Eh? You might be very qualified. You might be a businessman like Nick Wendor. You might have the degrees and the PhDs and the masters. You might be a professor. But however qualified you are, if you don't carry the ethics with you, ethics are what really matters. Ethics are what hold foundations. Foundations are held with ethics. I, I, I may be the best uh, economist, but if I like ethics, conduct and becoming, transparency and accountability missing, medulla oblongata missing, you know, corruption, then all, everything that I have, everything that I launch, all the papers, all the qualifications, all the accolades, all the trophies will mean nothing. But what is lacking in our management of football is not uh, professionalism. What is lacking is lack of ethics. Those ethics, if we bring them into management, I am telling you, our football will go very, very far. And I say Fouti Moluvi is bringing, other than that uh, 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 experience that I have in uh, management, I am bringing ethics in it. I'm bringing transparency and accountability and integrity. When I come inside that office of FKF, members from the fourth estate, you will have direct line to question our management 24-7. All the auditors who want to come and audit, whether it is the ethics and the corruption, whether it is the DCI, whether it is a private entity, our books will be open to you to edit. And again, I say, all that money that comes from FIFA is not supposed to go to recurrent expenditure, to pay salaries, and to, to run clubs. No, no. That money is supposed to be used for development, and that money should be poured down at the grassroots. I will look for money from corporate companies, partners, and even advertisement so that I can run the league. And I will bring a new structure. Like Osano said, uh, clubs should be having academies. Mine is a bit different from that. I will bring in new structures whereby we will have, in every ward, we will have at least three strong teams, which FKF will be funding through me. And from there, every constituency will have one very, very strong team, which now can come and play at the county level. We want to make sure that this talent is noticed at a very tender age, and it is followed, nurtured, and it is taken far. And I will also utilize IT. And we utilize IT because how do we follow up? How do we follow up? Every word, we will make sure there is a representative of FKF and in the schools, colleges and universities, we will make sure that the head teachers or the mini or the teacher of sports, the head of sports, we will be having access to internet, access to our uh, email, our access to our website, whereby they can be sending to us information about any special talent they have spotted. Immediately, we will be referring our coaches to that school, college, or, or university to follow up on that talent. We'll be keeping tabs. When you keep tabs for, for a player since childhood, we will not arise a case whereby uh, somebody is going to play a... In Europe, or says uh, they are 20 years old, 
but to the truth, maybe they are 50 years old. No. So in total, you say you will come in summary. In summary, you are saying that you will come age cheating. So fair enough. Robert Bonfaso Sano, of course, a lot of women are also watching the show, and we've seen Nick Mwendwa picking uh, the long serving football administrator, Doris Petra, as his running mate. I know integration is key <laughs> for the success. Maybe in terms of women's football, because we have to be gender sensitive. Uh, women's football has also been active, though to some extent, not as active as uh, this male dominated affair. How do you see going uh, about ensuring that you know the predicaments, tribulations that has been facing women soccer and women footballers are also abolished? Maybe do you seek having a running mate with a woman, Osano? Uh, Osike, uh, just to say something before I answer you, I think uh, let, let's be very clear and, uh, and really pragmatic and uh, important because. Um, if you look at the money coming from FIFA uh, to the federations uh, under the FIFA forward, uh, in four years, you're entitled to uh, $6 million from FIFA. But uh, every year, a federation gets $1 million, and that's for administrative purposes. The, what's remaining there out of the, out of the, uh, the four millions uh, every year for, for organization, we have two million that you can access and you can use it for development. So you only have two million dollars in four years uh, to, to develop. And uh, I've seen some, some federation, they build hotels, uh, some build uh, training pitches. Uh, I want to categorically say that this money from FIFA is not enough. And if you have ambitious program uh, to develop football in the country and you want to rely only uh, on the funding from FIFA or the government, then I don't think you're, 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 you're being uh, truthful. And uh, I don't think that you, 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 I think you're going to get into office there and really get shocked and realize that uh, it's, it's not what uh, I've been thinking. Uh, the money is not even enough to, to, uh, to, to do the daily because if, if you want to run a federation which is professional, then to get elected president of the Football Kenya Federation in the upcoming elections. Of course, uh, we're winding up, time not on our side. Just in a few seconds, both Osano and Mutie, you are parting short. Mutie, you are parting short in a few seconds. What are you promising football lovers in the country? and Bonfas Osana are still with us. We're going to take a short break and of course we will be up next with the fans on fan favorite segments. Don't go away, stay tuned. It's the touchline from 1 to 3 every Saturday. But you know, Football Kenya Federation elections is the talk of the town. I don't know whether I'm uh, good to go to proceed with this gentleman so that we can wind up or I can take short break. I stand guided by Fadili. Still, I can hear Fadil is telling me that we still have a technical hitch that is being addressed. Let's take a short break. We will be back next. <laughs> 